Do you remember your first song or what you were rapping about back then? <laughs> I don't. I remember the first song I recorded. It was some song called See Me Stunting. Don't, don't tell nobody else that. I, I try to wipe that from my, from my own memory. But it was called See Me Stunting. And I was like, whoa, you see me stunting. Whoa, you see me stunting. I was doing stuff like that. <laughs> it was like I was doing Soulja Boy shit. <laughs> what was that song about? Stunting. You see me stunting. I got nice cars and I got jewelry and I got bling bling. But I'm only like 14 years old. So where I'm getting all this stuff? So those raps weren't true back then? Nah, they was cap. Rap cap. Sir cap a lot. Is that song still out if people wanted to hear it? I hope not. Uh, it might be oh, somewhere. Oh, you you sly dog. It might be somewhere on, um, I'm, I'm going to keep it G. It might be somewhere on MySpace somewhere. Like if people, if y'all still got like a MySpace login, look for, I don't even remember what my name was on there. But it was called See Me Stunting. If you see a song called See Me Stunting, it might be me. What did your first recording studio setup look like back then when you started? Um, the first studio I recorded in, it was my cousin's house studio, but his studio wasn't like no janky like house studio. He had like a whole setup built like in his crib, like just for like a studio. So it was pretty nice. Um, yeah, that was the first studio setup I ever went to. And then I jumped straight from that to Cool and Dre studio. I was kind of spoiled when it came to studios. I was kind of spoiled. I'm learning what it's like to like record in the house and shit like that now. Like it's coming more natural to me in the crib. I used to not be able to record if I wasn't like in like a nice studio. You feel me? But now I could you could pull up a, a, a microphone in the bathroom or something. I'm liable to give you some bars now. You feel me? It's just stepping out of my comfort zone. Was this cousin on your mom's side or dad's side? Mother, my mother's side, my mother's side. Yeah. Your cousin still has that studio. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He, he was a lot older than I was. I was like really young and he was, I think he was around my age. So I don't even think he rapping anymore. <laughs> he a little up in age now. Uh, he was rapping back then. He was rapping back then, yeah. Did you name your cousin? No, I didn't. Did you want to name your cousin in this interview? Yeah, Deacon. Yeah, Deacon. You like recording during the day or at night? At night. Why? The juices just flow better at night. It's crazy. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's because I was born at night. Something, I don't know. I just, I'm just more creative, more active at night. I'm a night person. I'm an owl. Are you a loner in the studio? Yeah, because I'm a little shy. I'm going to be dead ass serious. I'd be a little shy. I'd be, I be too worried about what people thinking because I'd be wanting all that shit to sound good. So I'd be too busy worried about like, Dang, are they feeling this out there? Like what they thinking while I'm recording it? So I'd rather just be there dolo. But I'm breaking out of that that uh, that train of thought as well. You know what I'm saying? So I have a few people in there with me. But I'm I'm the type of person that goes to the studio to actually work. Like I'm not one of those people that want to hang out in the studio for eight hours and just sit around, smoke, and post videos and all that for eight hours. If I'm in there for eight hours, I'm recording seven and a half hours out of those eight hours. You record inside the mic booth or outside of it? Uh, inside. Inside. I've recorded outside of, like maybe twice, but I'm more in the booth type of guy. But um, this whole project that I'm working on now, it was it was in my my in Neary, in Neary's uh, living room. You know what I'm saying? Like Neary got a little set up in this in the spot, and he cooked. He made the beats right then and there, and I'm sitting there and I'm writing them, and we we knocking them out right then and there. My whole project that's coming out, that's it's all those vibes. What's the project titled? Uh, it's called the Grand Prix. And why do you like recording inside the mic booth? Um, I feel I'm more comfortable alone. So I feel like it puts me in a, a space of like no judgment. I'm here by myself to just let out what I really feel. You know what I'm saying? You record sitting down or standing up? Both, both. How do you decide? Um, how tired I am. <laughs> I record sitting down when I'm tired. That's, that's the honest truth. If I'm like dead tired, I'm gonna sit down and just pull the mic like this and just spit just like that. Do you notice any difference in the actual music? Nah. Sitting I, down or standing up? I actually don't. I feel like it's just the vibe, like what you feeling at the time. If you feeling like, um, 
you're the greatest artist in the world and it just flow like that and it come out, it just come out. I don't think it matters whether you sit and are standing. It just depends on, I mean, some people might not be able to record, like, doing both. Some people have their own comfortable thing, but I don't have a specific way. I, I could record laying down if I felt like it. I just like, I just like doing this shit. When you're in the recording studio, top three things you need. In the studio. My raps, the beat, and an engineer. <laughs> Honestly. I don't go I don't really go to the studio to like I said to party. If it's there, if the liquor and the vibes is there, then it's there. But I really just go to work, to be honest with you. When there is things like liquor involved mm -hmm. and you're recording. Do you notice any difference in your music? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. It depends. But it's like I said, it's always a vibe. So if I'm having fun and I'm doing it, then um, it's, it's always a good time. But I never get like sloppy, sloppy drunk to the point where I'm not going to be able to record and I'm slurring on my words and I'm looking all stupid and stuff like that. No, I'm not doing that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pacing myself. You know what I'm saying? What percentage would you say out of 100%? You're in the recording studio mm -hmm. and there's no drugs in your system. Mm -hmm. what, what percentage would what you percentage? say? What percentage? Yeah. And when I say drugs, yeah. I'm using that term very generally, very, but okay. it could be liquor, it could be marijuana, it could be designer drugs, hard drugs. I mean, yeah. the word drugs these days can, can be relative, yeah. but I'm just talking about that whole atmosphere there. Yeah. What percentage would you say? Nothing in your system in the studio versus maybe something. Nothing in my system? Yeah. Like 90%, to be honest with you. I don't really do the recording under the influence thing, like, like too, too crazy. But when I do, it's still a good vibe, you know what I'm saying? Um, I really kind of just started smoking this year. I didn't really smoke like my entire life like that. I'm not really like no, you know what I'm saying? No real smoker. I was like drinking heavy at one point when I was like going through some stuff in my life, but it didn't like impact like how I was recording and how much I was doing it as I was recording. I kind of keep all that stuff like separate. It's weird. I know, I know how to like balance the two, you know? You've overcame those issues with the drinking? Yeah, I have. Thank God. I have, yeah. It was kind of bad. I was just going through like depression, uh, just trying to find out who I was, who I am. Do I really want to do music? Do I really want to do this? Is, do I have another calling? Um, am I wasting my time? Am I, you know, it was just, it's just a lot of life stuff. You know, you don't want to be the, the, the old dude still trying to be um, a rapper and you don't want to still be living in your mom's house and you feel like you had all that time wasted sacrificing for something that may or may not come true. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you feel a little crazy um, doing that because you see everybody building their lives and doing this and doing that while you're over here chasing this. You ain't always got the money to do what everybody else doing, go on vacations, go on trips because you're, inve you're investing in like doing music and trying to, you know, pursue something and trying to accomplish something. So I was, I was battling with that like badly, like badly. So I was like just drinking, drinking, drinking. And I didn't see it as a problem. I just, I think I was masking it as like having fun. Oh, I need a drink because I had a long week. But it's just like, no, you don't, nigga. You don't need a drink because you had a long week. You need some sleep and some rest. That's what you need, you feel me? But we kind of um, use what we're going through to, to, as an excuse for our vices to, to do stuff that we don't really need. We make excuses for ourselves all the time. And I think that's what I was doing. I was making a lot of excuses instead of getting help, instead of going to see a therapist, instead of talking to somebody. But that comes from me saying what I said before, is me, like to, me liking to be the strong one until that shit finally was like breaking me down. How did you overcome that? Um, spending more time with, with doing things and appreciating things that I actually like. You know what I'm saying? Like all this material, all this, you know, all this dopeness, all this drip right here. It's cool, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's really cool, but if, this right here ain't right, it's just not right. So I spent more time like reading, um, secluding myself from things that I don't need to be around. You know what I'm saying? It's trying to convince myself that, oh, I gotta be like these people or hang with these people to feel cool when really not. These people kind of admire who I am and what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not around them all the time, partying with them all the time to know how proud of me they are for working so hard, you know what I'm saying? So it's just more of me being more gentle with myself because I beat myself up a lot.
you know, I, I, I make myself responsible for a lot of shit, even if it's not my fault. And that's one of my flaws. I have to stop putting so much pressure on myself. But I think that's, that can, that's gonna also make me great at the end of the day as well. This depression, was this self-diagnosed or you were diagnosed by a professional? It was self-diagnosed, but I, I knew I was going, th I knew I was battling depression because I wasn't myself. I would lay down in bed all day. Like I wouldn't want to do anything. I would just eat, watch TV. People asked me to go outside. People asked me to do this. I didn't want to go to the studio. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to lay in bed all day. And me laying in bed just made my thoughts worse and worse and worse. So I, I know I was battling a depression. It may sound crazy or I'm not a, a professional or a specialist or nothing like that, but I knew like it was, it, I was battling something with my mind and with myself. How long did it last? Ooh, maybe a year and a half, a year, like a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. And did you ever end up seeing a professional? Did you end up seeing a therapist? You mentioned it in the conversation, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you had actually seen it. No, I always said I wanted to, but I just, I still haven't gotten to it. I still do, I still do. I have a, you know, I've, I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot of stuff, um, been around a lot of stuff. So I think, you know, one day I have to talk about it. I gotta get it out of, out of here in order for me to grow, in, for, in order for me to move on. But I also feel like it drives me. You know what I'm saying? That passion, that pain comes out in my art. You feel me? Depression, is that something that runs in your family perhaps or no? Um, I think my mother. My mother, she might have battled with it a little, um, but I'm not sure how severe it was. I never really had that conversation with her, but I know she does have problems with her mind sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying she's crazy or nothing like that, but she deals with it, like anxiety and things like that. So it could be hereditary. And... Um... I would have some questions I would love to ask her about that. Yeah. Uh, but she's not here in the interview, so I'll keep going <laughs> with just you. Yeah, that's true. Shout out to you, Mama. I love you. I love you so much, Mama. You have a good relationship with your mom. I do, yeah. We, we actually clash a lot. We clash a lot, but it's, it's always love at the end of the day. We just have, like every other, every, not all two human beings have the same views on life and you know where what you should be doing and where you are and uh, you know I don't I don't not speaking um, based on our our relationship but no two people just like always agree on everything and me and her are like very strong minded people so we clash a lot but it, it always comes from a place of love she just don't want to see me um, fucked up out here you know what I'm saying and this me is like no I know what I'm doing trust me I'm a man I got this and you know that's that's what it was you know. Did she know the uh, depression uh, she actually period? Didn't. She actually found out through interviews like this. She was watching one of my interviews and was like, I didn't know you were going through that. You know, she sent me a long text and like, it bothers me that I don't know this about my kids and this and that and that. But it's like, you went through a lot, you know what I'm saying, raising me and my brother for so long, you know what I'm saying, on your own. It wasn't hard, I mean, it wasn't easy, it was tough. Um, she put us through private school, just everything, just being there for two black, men, you know what I'm saying, our entire lives um, and supported us in every sport and everything that we did. So it's like already a lot on your plate, you know what I'm saying? So why would we want to bring that extra baggage on you just making you stress yourself out more? Like, nah, we, we got this. I'm a grown man. I'm going to handle this. And when I do handle this, I'm going to come back and treat you like a queen and take care of you when I get to where I got to be. Thank you for being there for me. I'm going to show you love. Whatever you want, I got you. Older brother, younger brother? Uh, younger brother. Same mother, same father for same Chibi. mother, same father. I have a couple other siblings from my from my father, but me and my little brother have the same mother, same father. And I know this period uh, uh, was like a year and a half, and you overcame this. Yeah. Uh, uh, how long has it been since you've overcome? Mm. It's been. It hasn't been that long, to be honest with you. It kind of. It was kind of recent. It was like. March, like March of this year, March. Like and it's August March. 2020 as of now. Yeah, March 2020, so yeah. Yeah, I do the math. But you still do drink, you're just not cope, you're just not using, no, the, using and was it liquor? It was more for fun. Yeah, it was alcohol. Okay. Yeah, but it was more for fun. It's more for fun now. It's not so much to like suppress my thoughts and stuff like that. No, it's just to like turn up and have a good time.
It's responsible for you guys. Responsible. Be responsible. Drink responsibly. <laughs>